Begin. So who here has heard of Chagas disease? All right, so as you probably know, it's transmitted by the kissing bug, assassin bug, or the cone nose bug, all right? Um, <coughs> excuse me. The disease is actually caused by Trypanosoma cruzi, which is a protozoa. Little microscopic beam that causes this Chagas disease. All right. Now Chagas was um, Chagas disease was the first discovered in Brazil by a doctor named Carlos Chagas in 1909. Um, initially, he didn't get a lot of respect for the research that he had done. They didn't believe that um, what he had discovered was actually a discovery. Um, not until years later did he actually get written Alright, so here's some pictures of this nasty bug in different life cycles. Um, it's, it's pretty creepy looking. I don't know who here likes bugs, but I definitely don't. Alright, so next slide. The etiology. Alright, Trypanosoma cruzi is a protozoa parasite that is transmitted um, by the feces from the vector, or the vector being the, the bug. Um, and what essentially happens, and this is pretty disgusting actually, is that the bug, in order to intake more blood or have a blood meal, will defecate. This protozoa-rich feces that the bug has just excreted um, can actually enter the body through mucous membranes or open cuts, wounds, things like that. Um, and that is one way for that disease to be transmitted. Mm -hmm. Alright, there's two phases to Chagas disease. The acute phase, which is the time frame is a few weeks to a, a few months, and then the chronic, which can be from a few years to several decades. There have been cases where people have actually lived for decades with this disease without having any idea that they even have it. All right, so if you look on the board, who here has lived in any of these places? Pretty, pretty much everybody, right? Mm -hmm. So cases have been reported not only in South and Central America, but there actually have been some cases now in North America. And this is pretty troublesome, again, because you can be undiagnosed or misdiagnosed for so long because you have no idea that you even have this disease. Alright, next slide. Okay, so as you can see in the red, this is where these nasty little bugs, the assassin bugs or kissing bugs, are very prevalent. Okay, next slide. Alright, so the main features that you need to look at for these bugs to identify them is that they have that the distinctive shaped head, the cone nose, or the cone head. Um, so you can see the difference. All the bugs here on the bottom, these are all assassin bugs, kissing bugs. Um, and the ones on the top are not. All right, so disease prevalence. Um, 
there have been plenty of areas where they have actually discovered maybe not the disease because again it's so hard to diagnose and so many people don't know that they actually have it but vectors and reservoir hosts have been found to actually carry the protozoa. Next slide. All right, so mechanism of transmission. Again, transmitted by feces, blood meal, desiccate, mucous membrane, kind of have it. Um, it can also be transmitted by eating the vector. So if by accident a bug crawls into your potato salad and you take a bite of it, bite down on them, you now could potentially have Chagas disease, or develop Chagas disease. Um, eating the reservoir host, which the reservoir host can be anything like a vermin or a raccoon or a possum, anything like that, congenitally, congenitally from mother to baby, um, through blood transfusion or even organ cancer plant. Plenty of ways for you to get it. Next slide. Okay, so here's a little picture of what an acute symptom could be. Fever, swelling at the site. You can see this little girl has it right by her eye, which is filled with mucous membrane. Um, swelling of the heart, swelling of the brain, or lining of the brain, which those two are rare in the acute phase, but they can happen. Next slide. All right, the chronic disease, or the chronic disease. Signs, clinical signs of the chronic um, So heart failure, megacolon, and mega esophagus. So you can see here that exhibit A um, is a heart that's incredibly enlarged and that is due to this protozoa. Um, down here, this gentleman actually passed away, obviously, because you can see how large and extended all his organs are. Um, this right here is his intestine and it's just bloated to, to what it is right there. Next slide. Okie dokie. So, diagnostic testing, the way that you can um, test for Chagas disease, and Colonel Shia has probably seen a couple cases of these, um, but blood slide, which can be tested only during the acute phase because the protozoa is actually traveling throughout the blood, um, serology, or biopsy, and biopsy is probably what Colonel Shia has seen. Next slide. All right, so treatment. Um, the only treatment that has been found to sort of kind of work are these two medications right here. The problem with these medications is that it's not approved by the FDA. You can't go to the pharmacy and pick it up. You actually have to go to the CDC in Atlanta, Georgia and specially request these medications. Next slide. All right, so prevention and control measures. It is so prevalent in South America and Central America because they don't have, as you can see from these pictures, they don't have homes that are properly sealed. So these bugs can come in at any time through all these areas that they want to. Mosquito netting, usually not feasible, feasible for them to purchase because they don't have the money to purchase mosquito nets to protect themselves from these types of bugs. Next. All right, zoonotic potential. So up here, you can see this is our lovely little pissing bug, our vector, and then the reservoir hose, which, which can also carry the, the uh, protozoa. Next slide. All right, relevance to military veterinary medicine. So I had the chance to talk to a um, Captain Travis Gilchrist, who is actually working for Public Health Command Region South. And he told me that they've been doing some research down there, collecting vectors to see if they actually have um, this protozoa, and they have found several cases. The problem is, is that we have soldiers and airmen training around these areas, just you know, a couple hundred feet away from where they bed, which is where these bugs are at. Um, they have also been cases of military working dogs actually coming up positive for Chavez disease. Next slide. So here's a lovely little tent. This is what we typically stay in. So obviously, this is not going to keep a bug out if a bug really wants to come in. And so we're at a higher risk because even if we have a soldier that gets, um, that ends up being a blood meal, chances are, even if they have swelling at the site, they're not going to report it. They're just going to say, ah, I'm just going to keep driving on. I'll be fine. So next slide. All right, 
we have any questions, comments, concerns? All right, perfect. Thank you for listening to my brief. Thank you.